I like to discuss topics related to infrared photography. In this video, I'll show you how to create infrared images with multiple colors using Photoshop. So here's an image that was taken with a camera converted with a 590 nanometer filter. And so let's get started with it. I'm in Adobe Camera Raw. So the first thing that I want to do is apply a profile. Here's a profile that I've created for this image. I've got another video that'll show you how to create profiles with the DNG profile editor if you need to do that. Then the next thing that I want to do is set a white balance. So we'll go into basic and I'll use the color picker. White balance is going to be super easy on this image because I've got this white playground set and I've also got the white clouds. They're both very similar. So everything's good there with the white balance. And I will probably do a little bit of contrast just to give this a little bit of life, maybe a little hint of clarity and dehaze as well. So I'll open up this image. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is swap my colors. And to do that, I'm going to use some actions that I've created for Photoshop. You can download these. I've got a separate video that walks you through how to use these. And I want to use the one called IR Channel Mixer plus HS, Hue and Saturation. I'll hit Run and that will apply that action. It applies the channel mixer, and then it leaves me with a hue and saturation layer that I can then use to globally modify the colors here, which is really good because in this case, I want the sky to be a little bit more blue than it is. So I'm gonna go here into the hue saturation settings. It's set to master, which will affect all colors. And I'll take the slider just a little bit to the right so that I can get the sky a little bit more blue. That'll make the foliage a little bit more yellow, and that's fine, not a big deal. I'm gonna take this hue and saturation layer and I'm going to rename it global. Okay, so now I need to get started on making my trees more colorful or, or at least different different colorful. So first thing I'll do is create a new hue and saturation layer from the bottom of the screen, go to hue saturation, and then I'm going to rename it. So I'll, I'll rename this first one tree one so I can distinguish between them later on. I need to create a mask so that I can have this hue and saturation layer only affect the tree that I want it to affect. So to do that, I'm going to go into Select, Select and Mask. And, and the Select and Mask tool is a great tool for identifying parts of the image that you want to mask out. So it's very powerful. So the first thing I will do is hit Invert because I don't want anything selected. And then I'm going to begin my selection. So I'll use, I'll do that with the tool, this tool in the upper left-hand corner, the Quick Selection tool, which you can get to by clicking this or hitting W as well. I'll take the size and I'll increase to kind of a bigger size there. That's about good. And I will just do a rough selection of this tree. So just kind of draw around the middle and give me a rough selection. And that's that's good. So now the next thing I want to do is refine the edges because you can see some of the edges are not so good. Before I do that, let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, the refine edge tool is up here. You can It's the second tool. You can click it or click the R key for refine edge and that will bring up a different tool. And what's nice about the refine edge tool is I can hold down the mouse key and just drag around these areas. It's not certain where the edge is and it'll help me to clearly define that edge. So you can see what it's doing is it's highlighting the branches, the leaves, but it's removing parts of the sky that have been selected. And it's basically, it's refining that edge. It's giving me a more precise edge, which, which is very difficult to do with just a brush tool alone. So this is gonna be essential, especially when you're working with trees and things like that. It's also really good for getting these gaps uh, that have been selected where there's you should actually be seeing sky. It will take you some time to work around your subject. The more precise of a selection you get, the better the result you're going to get. So I'll, I'm not going to make this perfect as we go, but we'll give you a pretty good idea of how this works. It can get a little bit tricky in spots where it's not obvious, like the difference between the tree and the sky is pretty straightforward, but down here you can see I've got tree and then the grass, which is the same color, and it just can't handle that at all. So I'll go back to the selection tool. I'm going to hit minus, and then I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller, and then I can subtract out these areas. And in fact, I think while I'm down here, I'll just go all around here, and I've got some areas down here that I want to get rid of in the background that are probably more grass challenging areas. So there we go. So that takes out the, with the broader strokes. I can use the W key for the, the selection tool, the quick selection tool, and then the R key refine edge. So I'll go back to this sort of process of working around my edges and, and making sure that I have a good selection. So you want to do that all around your image and get some of these 
gaps as well. And up here, I've got some areas that I want to clear out. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I'll hit Control-0 and bring my image back out. So that's a pretty good selection. On the right-hand side, there's a refine mode, which by default here is set to color aware, which is usually pretty useful for infrared because I wanna separate out foliage color from sky color. There's also an object aware, which you might find, might find useful under certain circumstances if the color differences aren't that great uh, and you need a, a different way to refine your edges. So refine mode, be aware of that. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And what this will do is it will create a mask. If you look at this layer for tree one, you can see that it's created a mask that represents that tree. And now if I make an adjustment to the hue and saturation, let's move the hue slider. You can see that now I'm changing the color of that tree and that tree alone. And there we go. So now I can continue to uh, make selections for my other four trees. So let me, uh, we'll speed this up as I work through these other selections. All right, so I've got all four of my trees colored and a couple observations, a couple things to keep in mind. So first of all, the more dramatic the changes you make to your hue and saturation, the, the more of a chance you're gonna have for fringing. So be careful with fringing. You can address the fringing by uh, continuing to refine your selection. And one of the things that's really nice about the selected mask, I can pick a mask that I've already created. I can go to selected mask. It will already pre-select the mask that's there. So if I want to really refine a mask, reduce the amount of fringing, then you can go back and do that and spend as much time as you like to get the effect out. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that we're stacking all of these adjustment layers uh, and because of the masks the trees will not interact with each other but there, we still have this global setting that could interact with all of them. So if you were to make changes to the, the global settings like let's say I change the hue globally then that's going to affect all of the other layers and all the other hue and saturation layers so just be aware of that. So there we go that's a look at how you can create more colorful images with your infrared photography. If you find these videos helpful on your infrared photography journey please consider liking, subscribing, or leaving a comment. Do you have any topics related to infrared photography that you'd like to see addressed? Leave a comment below. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.